Hello and welcome everyone to test 40 of Selective Preparation Power Thinking Skills. In this video, we are going to go through 10 selected questions um, and have a look at the solutions to these questions. Let's start with the first one. So this first question was an ordering question. We need to choose the way that we put the sentences so that they are in correct numbered order. For questions such as this one, I want you to look at the overarching statement, the biggest overarching statement first, and then go into the details. So for me, the first one would be number three. Okay, and the reason being, number three provides a starting point as to what we are going to be exploring, which is the Antarctic. Why would anyone go to the Antarctic? Okay. And then after that, we are going to look. So from here, the next statement would be number one. Okay, so we're going to put three and then one. For half the year, it is mostly darkless, dark and sunless. So this is linking to this idea of why would anyone want to go to Antarctic? So then we keep following this train of thought and linking the ideas together. The next one would be number two. For the other half, so we're mentioning the half and the half, it is nearly always daytime. And now we're wrapping up with four. Yet, okay, despite this, people have been going to the Antarctic for over a hundred years. So that sequence would be option B. Assessing the impact of additional evidence. So if we look at this, the um, paragraph provided or the information provided, the main conclusion is that supermarkets um, here, prepackaged produce in supermarkets would reduce food waste as it does not allow shoppers to pick individual pieces of fruit and vegetables but gives them a random selection. We want to find something that weakens this argument. Okay, weakens this argument that pre-packaged food makes less waste. Okay, sorry, I wanted to highlight that. Makes less waste. And the answer here is actually B. Okay. It's B. Food waste from supermarkets is often donated to individuals who cannot afford food. So why this is the best answer is we talk directly about this food waste from supermarkets, which is the main thing that we are talking about here. Okay, We're talking about food waste from supermarkets when people are selective and they buy fruit and veg and they leave behind the bruised and unattractive ones that get thrown away. Now, if these were often donated to individuals, i.e. not wasted, then the statement here that prepackaged produce is the only thing that reduces food waste is false, is weakened. Okay, It suggests another purpose for food waste that is beneficial. Therefore, B is the answer. Right, evaluative reasoning. Which one would strengthen Haley's argument? So we know it's about animal testing. And Haley's main argument is located at the very end. Haley believes that animal testing is inhuman and should be banned. Inhuman means that it is not ethical. It is not something that should be done on another animate living being. So which of the options would strengthen this idea that animal testing is inhuman? The answer is C. Many animals are subjected to force feeding and infliction of wounds. So this basically shows the extent of the inhuman treatment that Haley believes in, um, and that comes with animal testing. So C gives more evidence to that and will strengthen the argument. Okay, so this is a relationship um, drawing kind of question. So we know that when a couple has children, they are financially stable and have a trusting relationship. Now, this is not to be generalized, okay? In real life, um, this may not be the case, 
but we have to take everything for, um, for at, at face value, sorry, for what it is, okay? So whenever a couple has children, they must be financially stable and suggesting both have a trusting relationship. So if this is true, which of the following is true? Let's have a look at the options. A. If Mark and Doug do not have a trusting relationship, they cannot have children. Is that true or false? Now, A is actually the correct one. Because we know when they have children, they are financially stable and have a trusting relationship. So if they are missing either one of these, they cannot have children. Now, in A, in this example, where Mark and Doug have a missing one, the trusting relationship, they don't have it. Therefore, using the information provided, we know that they cannot have children. Now, that means B, C, and D are all um, correct, okay? So let's look at B. If Mark and Doug do not have children, they are not financially stable. So this is not definitely true, right? If Mark and Doug do not have children, there might be other reasons. They might not be financially stable, or they might not have a trusting relationship, or it might be both. But this is possible. Therefore, we can't definitively say that B is incorrect. And so on for C and D. Okay, so for this question, um, there were a couple rules that were, um, I guess, were in the text. Uh, I would just start off by writing down all of the scores for A to E. So the first person is A. Green ball means five. Okay. Now blue ball, where's blue? Is here. It trebles the score, three times the score. Now the score is 15. White ball, just add one. So you have 16, you have 17. And for red ball, he doubles the score of his next ball. This is at the end, so the red won't have anything to double. So it will just be 17. Okay. For B. If a person chooses red ball, he doubles the score of his next ball. So green would be um, five, okay, here. So red, five times two is 10, okay? And then the green will add five, we get 15. And, sorry. Um, for this one, the red's gonna act on the green, okay? so. The red is doubling green, green is five. So then with these two combinations, we'll get 10, okay? Now white is one, so we have 11, 12. And now we know that blue will treble the score of the ball he immediately chose before. So here the white is one. So we treble it, we get three, okay? Then we add it on, we get 50. Okay, next one. Red is um, nothing, right? Remember, consecutive red balls count as one red ball. So this is ignored. This one is the same case. Green is five. We're gonna double it, we get 10, okay? White is um, one. And blue, the score is tripled for the one before. So this would be, this would have been an 11. Triple white, we get three. So we add it on, we get 14. D, we have um, white, white, so two so far. And then red and green is 10. So you add it up, you get 12. We don't know the last one. And E, red and red, we don't know, this cancels out. Red doubles the white, we get two. And green is just five. Two plus five plus five, we get 12. So who won the game? You can see that A scored the most. So A won the game, option D. And next one, if D scored 12, what was the color of their last ball? So let's go back. We can see that D already has a score of 12 without the last ball, okay? If his final ball gave rendered a result of 12, that means that he um, or she did not increase the score, i.e. the last one provided a net change of zero. So which one would do that? 
the answer is red, okay? Because red only acts on the next ball that's happening, not the ball previous. So there's no next ball here, therefore the red will do nothing, it'll be zero. So the next color would be red. Okay, which one would not construct a cube? The answer is B, okay? And the reason being, if you think about a cube, you can think about it as a empty four-sided shape and there's two lids, one on the top and one on the bottom. You need these two lids on either side of this long strip, okay, to close the box. However, B does not have that. It cannot close up like a box or a cube. Therefore, B is the answer. Okay, for question eight, what we did was construct a simple Venn diagram, okay? I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do this and probably just go straight to the answer. But we first draw three circles, okay? And asked if they're playing tennis, basketball, or soccer. Now, I suggest with Venn diagrams every time to draw a box around everything because there may be people who don't do any of the three, okay? So you need to include those people if they did the test, or if they did the survey. And the next step is to, in, to start from the inside, okay? Start from people who do everything or belong in this middle bit here, okay? In this middle bit here. So that is easy. It's the last, the second last one. Four people all play, play all three sports, so four goes in the middle. And the reason we do that is because these statements are too broad they are talking about the whole circle, so either basketball, tennis, or soccer. So you can't really divide that number into the bits that you need to, okay? So 17 play at least both tennis and soccer. What does that mean? That means that in this bit here, oh no, let's use the highlighter. Oops. Sorry about this. Okay, so in um, the tennis circle there, highlighter, okay, in this bit, they will play at least both tennis and soccer. So they can either play just tennis and soccer, or they can play tennis, soccer, and basketball. So that highlighted bit will add up to 17, which means that the inside here is 13. And you're going to work through all of that with these three. And at the end, what you're going to do, you know that 77 will play tennis. Okay? You will find this bit out here. So you can minus it from 77 and find this bit here. Okay? And remember, nine don't play any sports. So you have to add the nine at the end to find how many were surveyed in total. Um, I think I have. Yep. So that's the solutions there. If you add everything up, you should get... A. Okay. All right. So how many only have two faces painted red? You can see that this these shapes here, okay, the ones that sit on the edges but not the very corners, okay, will have um, two faces painted. So on each of these faces, we have one, two, three, four, okay, five, six, seven, eight, and we have one at the back, nine, ten. And then one on the side, 11, and one on the bottom, 12. So the answer is C. Another way is you can minus the corners. Okay, we have eight corners and minus these single ones, which has, we have, yeah. So how many, many there are, and then, and then you figure out how many cubes there are all together, 27, and you should render a result of C, 12. Okay, last question, subject of discussion. Which of the following of true strengthens the argument? So let's find the argument. The main argument is that there are a lot of um, debilitating long-term head injuries in the recent times suffered by American footballers, and it's a condition known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Okay. Um, so the underlying argument is that there's been improvements in safety equipment but there's no amount of technology that will sufficiently protect the delicate brain. Just to talk about CTE, chronic traumatic 
encephalopathy. Okay, so the first um, step, I guess, is to look at this argument and match it up with a strengthening argument. The answer here is C. Okay, the rate of CT has increased steadily in recent years. That's list, that's linking to that. CTE is directly linking to the main ideas we're talking about. Despite improvements in safety equipment, that links directly to this whole highlighted bit there. Okay, so try to make these links and find the answer that way. Right, some key points from this test. I want to talk about, first of all, the Venn diagram. Okay, so I want you to um, make sure to draw okay, a box around everything and include the people who don't belong in um, any of the three circles, okay, if mentioned. So sometimes they don't mention it, um, and sometimes you have to figure it out by minusing it from the total, okay. And I also want you to start, okay, from the most overlapped part, okay. This will provide clues for the uh, more separated parts. So if that makes sense. I want you to start from the inside out, okay. And now I'll talk about the um, nets, okay, and 3D shapes. So we had two questions. Um, to do with the cubes and finding that. Um, I want you to revise, okay, the way nets form, okay, um, by practicing um, visualization, okay. Um, and also I want you to use the given diagram, okay, or draw a diagram to work out these questions. So that is it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Um, and until next time, please review these key points. I'll see you then.